I didn't remember their storyline and I didn't like going through the storyline again. He, to he told the band as they were forming to, to shout, um, protect the dragon reborn. And then of course Kaladin was like, the f*** is he where? And then dies off screen by man. Just somebody's opinion. Hey everyone, my name is Bodhi and welcome back to my channel, Just Some Bodhi's Opinion, where I talk about things that matter to me, like books, movies, and all sorts of random other things that come to my mind. Today, I'm going to be talking about my Wheel of Time reread for The Fires of Heaven. It's going to be a spoiler review uh, and full of my reactions of what happened for The Fires of Heaven. So notes before we begin, this won't be a play-by-play. -play. It, it will be about my top reactions and thoughts from my reread of The Fires of Heaven. Please like and subscribe if you'd like to follow me through my reread. Spoilers ahead, please note that I will be discussing details within The Fires of Heaven quite heavily. So. Let's first do a recap of what I did remember from the Fires of Heaven from my previous video of what I remember from the Wheel of Time. All I remember from the Fires of Heaven was the Fires of Heaven. Like the, I guess that was the climax where all the, where fires came down from heaven. Was that Ilian? <coughs> going against Samael? <coughs> there? I don't remember. Um, so they'll... They'll rain fires from the sky. I guess, I think it's Ilian. It's one of the great cities. And yes, this is where Matt first dies. And then, I think. And then um, Rand will bail fire, the f like make a big bail fire. And then, so Matt will come back, but will remember that he had died. I think that's what I remember. Oh my god, I don't remember anything from Fries that happened then. So, basically, as you saw from the recap, I remembered nothing except for the climax being the Fires of Heaven part. And I did forget that it was in Camelot. I thought it was in Ilian with, with Samael. No, it was actually in Camelot with Gabriel slash Raffin. So, let's talk about first what I completely forgot about for the Fires of Heaven. Number one, anything about Nynaeve and Elaine. I completely forgot. The entire storyline of Nynaeve and Elaine, basically the menagerie storyline with Val and Luca and all of these other random side characters. The last time we see Nynaeve and, and Elaine was they were coming from Tenchiko and they, they were gonna go back to Tarvalon. So they were going through all this time. And so I completely forgot like the circumstances that ended them up going to the menagerie. And so I completely forgot about Birgit um, being there. In my What I Remember video, I had thought this was gonna happen in episode, no, no book eight. I, I even forgot that Brigitte was already helping them out since the Shadow Rising. I forgot Saladar. I forgot that they came to Saladar at this point in time. And I forgot about Mogedian being captured in the end. I had actually thought Mogedian was going to be captured at the same time as Asmodean was going to be captured in the Shadow Rising. And that was my mistake, I guess. I forgot that Mogedian was like chasing after Nynaeve and Elaine. Mogedian even had this sequence where she reveals herself to the Black Sisters and then basically gives Leandrin what that bitch needed. I loved how Mogedian was captured in the end where Nynaeve shows her mast mastery of Dalaran Riyod and was able to capture Mogedian using an Adam. What else I completely forgot about? I completely forgot about Melindra and Matt. So Melindra, the maiden of the spear, who turned out to be the dark friend who had been supplying Kadir with his slips of paper saying that he wasn't alone. So all I knew was that um, Melindra and Matt weren't going to happen because she's not the daughter of the Nine Moons. I didn't recall that he was going to kill her. And I liked the way it was written where Matt let fly his 
his dagger and he thought that all he could think of was he wanted to take it back but it bloomed in her chest and and she died thinking about his his pretty eyes so it was really sad for matt and i forgot about camelin and when i wrote camelin here i forgot that Nynaeve had brought Mogedian into the climax of of the Camelin battle while Raven and and Rand were like battling each other in the flesh in the world of dreams and I didn't realize just how instrumental Nynaeve was in in helping out Rand that was completely out of the blue for me let's talk about what I appreciated this time around so what I appreciated reading through this time around was the knowledge of Moraine's impending doom. I was super annoyed with Moraine like in The Shadow Rising because I thought she was being, you know, extremely mysterious, definitely did not have the effect that she wanted with Rand and she kept continuing to do that. Within The Fires of Heaven, you know that she had seen something in the Terangriel and she knew that she was going to die. What I loved about it is that now reading through it, I was able to really appreciate that Maureen knew that it was going to happen and so she surrenders to it. And the, the term that was used was that she remembered how to use Sidar, which is you surrender to that powerful force and then you guide it. And so basically um, where she gives her oath that she would do whatever he wanted. Everyone was so shocked with that. Lan was shocked. Rand was shocked. And then, you know, by the end of the book, he was doing exactly what she wanted. And he he was trusting her. He was beginning to trust her to give her to give her all those things. And it was also funny, like so one of the funny scenes that I remember from this was when Matt and Elaine were talking. So it was in the third uh hand point of view, right? And what happened was Matt Matt had said wonderingly that Rand had told Moraine to go out until she cooled down and she did and then that was really funny so let's talk about some scene stealers I will keep rereading because I love them so much one scene ste stealing moment I loved was when Matt is tricked into revealing his thoughts about the battle for Kyria the reveal later on that it was Rand who instigated that was also you know telling about what's happening to Rand but I liked how Lan was there and just very very subtly guided Matt into an assessment of the map and then Matt is finally able to truly channel the, the battle memories that he had and that was, I thought that was really cool I understood almost nothing from that battle sequence but it looked like he knew what he was doing so much so that Asmodean who was in the same tent was shocked and how Lan had assessed to Rand later on that that Matt only needed a glance of the map and then he was able to create a battle plan almost the same as as the chiefs and here also i realized that rand was very ignorant about anything on battles and you you remember that he's supposed to be an 18 slash 19 year old boy here who d doesn't know anything about battles so he was confused about the aspects that matt was talking about like having miners or engineers or etc and the fact that Matt knew all that with his battle knowledge made it even more impressive. <laughs> I also love how Matt unwittingly formed the Band of the Red Hand and killed Kaladin off screen. So I appreciated his trying to escape his destiny. But I liked how because he got into command of that group and it ended up bringing them all throughout and killing Kauladin off screen because as I recall it he told he told the band as they were forming to, to shout um, protect the dragon reborn and then of course Kauladin was like where the fuck is he where and then dies off screen by Matt and then of course 
Aviander running away and traveling. I had actually thought this was gonna happen the previous book and I kept waiting and I, I didn't remember like what happened what what instigated the traveling and I didn't I didn't even realize that it was to Shan Chan. I just remember that it was snow and that Rand um, chased after her and then heated her up with her, his body. That's all I remember. I didn't remember that there was Shan Chan after that. And that's where he got the dragon spear, which was a, a Shan Chan spear. And finally, going to what I could have done without context. I love Nynaeve and Elaine. I completely dislike them in this book. I didn't like all the snipping between Nynaeve and Elaine. I didn't even like inhabiting the viewpoint. I mean, very clearly, I guess Jordan was laying out how hypocritical Naini was with herself. And I think he was setting this up so that he, the the moment that she does mature becomes even more poignant. poignant. But I, I was very, very annoyed with the entire storyline whenever Naini was thinking, right? All her inner monologue was always how she was better and and the men were, you know, foolish people. So I, I, I found that really, really annoying. And especially since, um, I guess, Nynaeve and Elaine got locked together in, in, and, and they were just snipping at each other. And I do like that small breakthrough, right? Where she suddenly ends up crying and saying, I am... I'm so tired of being afraid because she was so tired of being afraid of Mogedian. And I like that breakthrough because at that point in time, suddenly the barriers fell down and Elaine and Brigitte came together and then told her, you know, what everyone was thinking. She had faced the Forsaken and survived. And if if she was afraid that Mogedian was after her, then definitely that's a very valid feeling. But I still didn't like the whole journey to get there. I didn't remember their storyline and I didn't like going through the storyline again. I am like in the first part of Lord of Chaos right now and I can already say I love the improvement between the Fires of Heaven and Lord of Chaos for both Nynaeve and Elaine. To recap, I really like the development of Matt as a battle general, finally using the the memories that he got from Ruthian. I was okay with the development of Rand. He was becoming, you know, harder. But as well, he was able to see the Maidens of the Spears as Maidens of the Spears instead of just babysitters. That was good for him. The Nine Even Elaine storyline, I super didn't like. And then to note, I guess, is that there was no Perrin storyline, nor an Egwene storyline. This is the first time the Emmons Field 5 didn't have screen time across since the Shadow Rising. And I guess that also shows how much the cast of characters has been growing for uh, the Wheel of Time. So out of the five books I've currently read, I would label The Fires of Heaven right beside The Eye of the World in terms of enjoyment, and that's at the back of it. Um, currently, my level of enjoyment would be The Shadow Rising, The Great Hunt, The Dragon Reborn, even with minimal rant, because that's where Matt becomes a badass. And then I would put Fires of Heaven right beside the Eye of the World. The Eye of the World for me was um, too slow. The Fires of Heaven went down a notch because of the Nynaeve Elaine storyline. But otherwise it was a pretty, I mean, that doesn't mean anything, right? Because all of these books are super cool. And this is just um, a way of ranking within the reference that we have. And so, um, that's that's uh, my thoughts for the fires of heaven. So if you liked watching this and you would like to join me in my journey of my reread, please drop me a like or subscribe and see you in the reread journey. Bye bye.